You're watching Destiny Church. Live your call, fulfill your destiny. Father, we just want to thank you, God, for this wonderful day as we celebrate, Lord, the resurrection, as we celebrate, Lord God, you conquering the grave. Thus, Lord God, conquering death for every single one of us. Lord, we just commit to you this time. And I pray, Lord God, that even right now, Lord God, you will just minister your word to each and every one of us. I pray, Lord God, that indeed, Lord, that uh, Lord, you will cause every one of us to come alive in the name of Jesus. Lord, I, I, I speak your word right now and prophesy, Lord God, that our spirits would indeed come alive. Our dreams will come alive. Our, our passion, Lord God, for life will come alive. Lord, you said in your word, and this is eternal life, that we may know you. And so, Lord God, this, this morning I pray that all the more we will get to know you for who you are. The God who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Lord, we just thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Before you take your seats... Go ahead. I, do, I want you to uh, look around you and greet the people around you. Happy Resurrection Sunday and a blessed morning. Sige po. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Destiny Church. And we are, I'm so delighted to see every one of you here this uh, wonderful Resurrection Sunday morning. You know, we are celebrating today uh, uh, Easter Sunday or the Resurrection of Jesus Christ. No? And first of all, I would like to greet those of you that are joining us for the very first time. If nandito po kayo and it is your first time joining us here at Destiny Church, can you just give me a wave so that I can personally greet you? Welcome. Welcome. Anyone else? Welcome po. Praise God. There's one over there. God bless you. Come on, give them a, give them a warm Destiny welcome. For those of you watching us over, uh, over Facebook or YouTube, no welcome po din sa inyong lahat. No, just, just a little bit of introduction. My name is Pastor Carlo Panlilio, and I'm the senior pastor of Destiny Church. No, uh, Me and my wife, uh, right after college, started Destiny Church about 24 years ago. So we have been uh, pastoring this church for the last 24 years. And by the grace of God, no, patuloy po yung paglago natin. We have satellites all over the Philippines like uh, Cavite, uh, Alaminos, in Pangasinan, Kalashaw, Dagupan. We also have one in Baguio. And several, several satellites also in Mindanao, like Davao. There's Destiny Davao. There's Destiny Zamboanga. There's Destiny Jensan. There's Destiny Butuan. And uh, there's also, I think, uh, two satellites in Bicol and uh, San Paba. No? And there's, there's also one in Sambales. And also, we have one in Bali, Indonesia. So, nandun po yung mga different satellites ng Destiny. And so, I'm, I'm just so happy that we could... Uh, uh, we could be all. We could all be here this uh, Sunday morning. No, now, maybe you're wondering, bakit nga ba destiny? Why do we call ourselves destiny? Simply this, because we believe that God is a God of purpose. That God is a God of destiny. What that means for you is this: your life is not a mistake. There's this amazing verse that we keep on sharing here at Destiny, in Jeremiah chapter 29. Verse 11, sabi po ng Lord, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And I want you to think about that verse for a while. Here is God telling us, first of all, he was this message He gave, He spoke to the nation of Israel. And during that particular time, yung bayan ng Israel, they were they were going through a time of crisis. They were going through a very problematic time. And yet, in the midst of that chaos, in the midst of the, the problems that they were going through, the Lord spoke to them a very encouraging word. Sabi ng Lord, Anak, I know the plans I have for you. Now, is it amazing that despite you know, our whole world seemed to be chaotic and crumbling, or you know, later on, I'm going to talk, be talking about this word, 
disoriented. No? Wala kang sense of orientation. In other words, you're lost. No? Praise God because God is above all our problems in our chaos and His plan, His plans remain the same. Okay? Nung pumasok po yung pandemic two years ago, yun nga, the whole world was caught by surprise. The whole world was caused, was was caught in this chaos. But then, no, praise God because He is above all the chaos. His plans remain. Sabi ng Lord, I know the plans I have for you. Declare so, declares the Lord. And what are those plans? Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. I don't know about you, but I, I thank God because nga, He has good plans. No? Plans to prosper, pagyamanin. No, in other words, no, mamuhay tayo na full, abundant. No, in John chapter 10, verse 10, sabi ni Jesus, I have come for this reason, that they might have life. And that they might have life abundantly. We're going to talk more about that in a while. No? Because you know, one of the things that we are confronted is no death. I'd like to ask how many of you are, no, are are not really excited about the prospect of dying. <laughs> no, tama ba? No, nobody wants to talk about death. Okay, the fact that no, even with the fact that it is real, totoo, no, we we will never be able somehow to escape no death. Eh. But then again, eh, the 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 good news is Jesus promised life, life in all its fullness. No, and no, Simon, I, I have come that they might have life and that they might have life to the full. And then going back to Jeremiah 29, verse 11, Sabi ng Lord, plans to give you a hope. Isang buhay na punong puno daw ng ano? Pag-asa. Isang buhay na may kinabukasan. Praise God that our future and our hope doesn't depend on our politicians, right? No, I don't know about you. I, probably our hopes and our future depend on politicians, no? Uh, that would be a very tragic thing. But our hope in our future is in Jesus Christ. Right? Tama ba? Amen. Amen. I want us to pray right now as we get into the Word of God. Lord, we just want to thank you, God, for today. And I pray right now that you will just uh, speak, Lord God, and encourage us through your Word. I pray, Lord, that we will have this revelation that indeed you are the resurrection and you are the life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Hey, uh, I think about exactly a month ago, we have started this new series just in time for the Lent. No? And the itong series na to is uh, the, the seven I am's of Jesus Christ. No? In the Gospel of John, one of the things that we will notice is, no, kumbaga, or parang one of the unique things. Alam nyo po, ano, if you look at your Bible, no, the, particularly the New Testament, no, the, the, there is what you call the four Gospels. No? Gospel means the good news. Okay? And uh, itong mabuting balitang ito, uh, sa, no, sa, what's this, from the perspective ng apat na disciples ni Jesus. One is Matthew, the other one is Mark, the other one is Luke, and the other one is John. Now, there is something unique Dun po sa, no, dun sa pagkakasulat ng the Gospel of John, one of the apostles. And, and, no, and one of those unique things is that only in the book of John will you find this seven I Ams. Ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng I Am? Okay? No, uh, uh, the I Ams of Jesus Christ somehow, no, it, it, it is, uh, kumbaga parang dito nag intersect yung humanity at yung divinity ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. No? And this has to do all the way when, kung kilala nyo po si Moses, just a little bit of introduction, no? kung kilala nyo si Moses in the Old Testament, no? when God told Moses to go to the nation of Egypt, no? if, if you know the story of the Ten Commandments, or the Prince of Egypt, no? No, the story of Exodus, no? sabi ng Lord kay Moses, bumalik siya sa Egypt no? so, that, uh, uh, so that he can tell the people of, uh, he, he can tell Pharaoh to let the people of God go. No, kasi nung mga panahon na yun, if you know the story, no, the nation of Israel, yung buong bansa ng Israel, they were actually slaves to, to Egypt for 400 years. And so God tells Moses, it is time no, to, to basically deliver, to set the nation of Israel free. No, now, Moses had a dilemma. Sabi niya, Lord, if I go there and the Israelites ask, no, 
Who is the God that sent you? What shall I tell them? Lord, pag ako tinanong, sino? No? Anong, anong pangalan ng Diyos na nagpadala sa akin dito? And you need to understand, during that time, no, the nations of the world, they, they had a lot of gods. No? Many, if, if you notice, no, a lot of religions in the world are what you call polytheistic. In other words, ang dami lang Diyos. No? You look at Greek mythology, Roman mythology, all the way to Hinduism. Ano, tapos dito sa atin, no, yung, yung merong pagka-animistic. No? Ang daming Diyos. Sinasamba yung araw, sinasamba yung hayop. No? But one of the unique things about Uh, Judeo-Christian uh, uh, belief no, is this no, it, no, we are you know, monotheistic there's only one God okay? and so Moses had a dilemma sabi niya, Lord, sinong Diyos ang ipa- sasabihin ko? and the Lord told Moses tell them I am sent you okay? sa Tagalog pag binasa niyo, parang it doesn't make sense so sabi ni Moses, sino nagpadala sa akin? sabihin mo sa kanila Moses pinadala ka ni ako. <laughs> Now, I don't know about you. Okay? But I think that doesn't really help. Right? No? <laughs> Someone tells you na, sabi mo, pinatala ka niya ako. Ako? Sino ako? Ako siya ako. Right? Does that help? But then what is God trying to say? How? How does God present Himself as the I Am? Because we need to understand there is no really limit as to who God is. No, that's why, that's why when we were singing a while ago, we were singing, we should be singing with such passion and greatness because we're not, we're not just, we're not just singing a song. We're not just singing to someone. We're singing to God. Tama ba? No, and that's why the passion, the, the, the excitement, the energy, Because we're singing to God who is a great God. Now, you know, there is no defining Him. There is no limit to His greatness. You know, can you imagine God created the whole universe? And we are, if you look at the planet Earth, as compared to a whole galaxy, no, 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 not just our galaxy, we are just but a tiny speck. Eh? You know, sometimes we think so, so big of who we are. Like, No. Sino dito feeling ito? <laughs> Or sumagi sa isip nyo na importante ka? And there's a, there's a tension with that. In a way, that's true. In a way, that's not really true. <laughs> you, no, sabi, sa, sabi sa Bible, we are just a speck of dust. No? I mean, think about it. If you die, there are almost six point that the last... Uh, the last census, parang 6.2 billion people in this world. And you dying doesn't really affect the world that much. Like maybe a few people will cry for you, weep over you, remember you maybe for a couple of months, a year maybe, but that's it. <laughs> the, how many of you know that the world will be fine when you die? <laughs> And that is, is even you know, how, wala, walang kwenta yung buhay, but then again, The God who created everything died for you. Then you must be worth something. Amen? So, anyway. So, yun nga, sinabi, ni, sinabi ni, ni God kay Moses, I am sent you. Fast forward 2,000 years later, Jesus Christ comes into the picture And he has this ch- you know, challenge as to how to get the people realize that the I am that delivered the nation of Israel has now come into the flesh. Remember, John chapter 1, alam natin natin ito in, in even in a, in a Catholic prayer, di ba? And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus. You know, the, the, the word that was from the very beginning now is manifested in fleshly form. But the, but the thing is, how does Jesus get to actually tell everyone that He is, that He is the I Am? Now, ibig sabihin ko sinong the I Am, I Am all you ever need me to be. If you are weak, then I am your strength. If you are sick, then I am your healer. If you are lacking, 
empty. I am your fullness. Diba? Sabi ni Jesus, I have come that you might have a full, abundant life. No, isang buhay na ganap. Sabi, don't fulfilled. Nag-uumapaw. No, there's that idea na parang, kumbaga, kumbaga sa, kumbaga sa, ano, if in, in relation sa, parang kabusugan eh. No, when was the last time talagang nabusog ka? <laughs> eh, by the way, guys, no, some of you, I think, no, I think you're reverting back to the online church. For the record po, naka-unmute po kayo ngayon. <laughs> You can actually talk and respond with me, right? Right? Come on, this is a day to celebrate. Our Jesus is alive. Tama ba? No, I should not be the only one speaking here. Right? Come on, destiny. Hey, our Jesus is alive. You should be alive. Amen? Parang sometimes we have lost that connection. Eh, na parang hala natin palagi lang tayo naka, naka-unmute eh. No, no. Okay, we're back in church. Okay. You're unmuted, right? So, pinag-usapan natin yung sinabi ni Jesus, I am the bread of life. We also talked about, uh, I am, uh, uh, I, I am the door. No, we, 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 now, this is the fourth Sunday, and we are going to tackle something very interesting. That has to do with, in a way, celebration of Easter. Okay. Jesus, one of the things that Jesus said about who He is, is that I am the resurrection and the life. Okay. John chapter 11, verses 11 to 14. Pasahin natin. Quick. This He said, Jesus, no, this Jesus said, after that, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. But I go so that I may awaken him out of sleep. Disciples, then the disciples then said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he was speaking of literal sleep. So Jesus then said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. I'd like to start off with uh, with this idea from uh, a well-known pastor, author, and theologian by the name of Walter Brueggemann in one of his bo- uh, best-selling books, no, yung, uh, The Message of the Psalms. No? Okay? And, and may, maybe nagit siya dito that no, the human beings, no, in other words, ikaw at ako, sinong tao po dito? Okay? No? Human beings regularly find themselves in these three particular places. No? No, sa, in other words, sa ating buhay, matatagpuan mo daw ang sarili mo in these three particular situations or scenarios. No? Allow me to, to just define these three scenarios where you might be into right now. First of all, he talks about a place of orientation. Okay? Basahin ko muna. A place of orientation, a place of disorientation, and a place of new orientation or reorientation. No? So, ano ibig sabihin ni Walter Brueggemann? Actually, he, when, when he uh, looked at uh, one of the books of the Bible, yung Psalms, nakita niya that the Psalms no, can be categorized, by the way, no, just a little bit of background, yung Psalms po, it's composed of 150 songs, choruses, no? And, and written a lot of a lot of it were a good portion of it were written by David, but then they were also written by other authors. No, and and somehow as Walter Brueggemann no looks at the Psalms, he realized that pwede palang i-categorize tung mga Psalms, tung mga awit na to, tung mga kantang ito into three categories that talks about yung buhay ng isang tao. Yun nga a place of orientation, a place of disorientation, and a place of new orientation or uh, Reorientation. Dun muna tayo sa orientation. You, anak, you could, yeah, you could uh, rest for a while. Okay. A place of orientation. Ano ibig sabihin nito? This is the place in which everything in our lives makes sense. I mean, this is your everyday life. Like, if you're here right now, and kahit paano, you're good. You're okay. You have no major problems. There's no major crisis that you're going through. It's just a regular day. No, it is a kumbaga parang it is a place of comfort. Okay, it is reliable. Kahit paano kumbaga parang you're not caught by any surprises. 
Okay? Doon sa mga estudyante, alam nyo, Monday na uli bukas. That's not a surprise. Papasok ka. Doon sa mga nagtatrabaho, yeah? It's, no, tapos na yung, tapos na yung bakasyon, no? So, yeah, it's comfortable, it's reliable, it is predictable. In terms of the current day, this would be, for most of us, no, parang, uh, you could say, parang ang sabi nga, no? parang pre-coronavirus day, no? prior to the pandemic, parang yun nga. No, it, it was, it's your regular day. Okay? And then, once in a while, pumapasok tayo sa tinatawag niya na place of disorientation. Ano daw tong, ano daw tong sitwasyon na to? No? Okay? And, and pansinin niyo, no? check this out. No? I, I believe that at least no, at one time in your life, you have somehow gone through a place of disorientation. It is in which we feel we have sunk into a pit. It happens when our world collapses. No, in other words, it collapses the world. Okay? And we feel that there's only one way out of the deep hole into which we have sunk. Life as we know it has changed in some way. We have experienced it. It's been either loss, death, a change in circumstances, health, or finances. Life feels unsettling, scary, nakakatakot. Hindi ka nasigurado ngayon sa mga bagay-bagay. No, kung baga parang ito yung mga bagay na hindi mo inaasahan, na matayang ka, bumagsak ka, uh, na wala ka ng pera, no, nagkasakit, na malalang sakit. Okay? And, and yun nga, it, it becomes scary and unpredictable. No, kung baga parang right now, you, ha, no, you start to question your future. Okay? This orientation often brings emotional pain and suffering. Okay? So, may nakaka-relate ba? Anyone here, at least at one point in your life, you feel so disoriented? Parang, no, dati maayos naman. Alam mo yung gagawin mo. You're, you were so sure about yourself. You know your dreams. You know your aspirations. You're somehow maybe excited about life. Or maybe if you're not at all excited, at least, no, at least you know where you're going. You know you're headed. But now, it's just, Chaos. No? May nangyaring hindi mo inaasahan, hindi ka komportable, natatakot ka, no? hindi mo alam ang gagawin mo, no? takot ka. No? Yung, yung, may, minsan, kagag, honestly, yung ibang disorientation, kagagawa naman natin. Eh. Si ditong na-disorient no? habang nag exam ka. Dahil talaga naman hindi ka nag-aral. Hindi ka naman talaga nagulat. Alam mo naman may exam. Pero, pero nakaka-disorient pa rin, nakaka-panic pa rin. No? So that is what you call and tapos yun na, ang kalakip nito is there's a lot of emotional pain and suffering. And there's, there's pain, there's suffering, it's, it's hardships. Okay? And then, there's another place no, that Brueggemann talks about, sabi niya, a place of new orientation. Now, what he's saying is, Pag naka-survive ka daw dun sa disorientation, no, magkakaroon ka ng, na, no, ng new orientation. Take note, hindi ka babalik dun sa normal. But what you're, what's gonna happen is, you're gonna gain a new perspective about life. No? In other words, hindi ka lang bumalik sa dati na pa kahit paano, pag, na, pag naka-survive ka sa disorientation, napapabuti yung kalagayan mo. You become better as a person. Okay? So, in which we, sabi dito, in which we realize that God has lifted us out of the pit and we are in a new place full of gratitude, awareness about our lives and our God. There's a, there's a greater sense of God. No? There's a greater sense of how God moved in your life and, and rather than regret and pain, and, and, no? No? you now become more you know, grateful. Ito yung, I remember years ago, I came up with a preaching series, yung Kaya Pala series. Eh, ano yung ibig sabihin nung kaya pala? Nangyari na ba sa buhay mo na may nangyaring napakasama? Pangit! No, na talagang na-devastate ka, nasaktan ka, na kumaga parang yun nga, halos gumuho o mawasa ka mundo mo. Pagkatapos later on, eh, no, dahil dun sa pangyayaring pangit, eh, may nangyaring, no, hindi mo lang na-survive, kumbaga parang mas gumanda pa. Tapos sa loob-loob mo, ito yung nasasabi mo, Kaya pala. Okay, sino na may mga kaya pala experiences? Ah, kaya pala. 
No? Ang problema, pag nandun ka sa pinagdadaan, you're going through the problem and the crisis, no? it's so hard to see later what, what, what God has planned for you next. No? And that's why a lot of people sometimes, they just stay in a, in a disoriented fashion. No? But, but, but ang, ang goal is, no, we, we go through a reorientation. We move out of the unfamiliar and we are you know, into a welcome place where we accept a new normal and understand that it is God who brought us here. Okay, now, okay. One of the greatest, so there are a lot of things that can cause people to become disoriented. Okay, pag sinabi nating disorient, no, ito yung, uh, no, you go to a, Ano, a, a state of confusion. Okay? Anyone, <laughs> you go through life and you're just confused. You're just frustrated. No, I, I remember one of the things na, because uh, 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 one of the things that I do, I, I do a lot before was, I, I'm a scuba diver and I, I dive. No? And one of the things na we now warn sa, pag nadu ka na sa ilalim at malalim, okay, merong possibility na madisorient ka. Ano yung sabi madisorient ka? No, dahil nga parang parang in a way, no, parang uh, you you go into a place na parang ano eh, parang there is no gravity, okay? Na pag diver ka, meron silang tinatawag na i-achieve mo yung negative buoyancy. Hindi ka lumulubog, hindi ka rin lumulutang. Tapos parang paikot-ikot ka lang. Na pag nagpag ang problema pag kunyari yung na nagkaroon ka ng sense of disorientation, no? Hindi mo alam sa nang taas at sa nang baba. Eh, kaya mayroong mga divers minsan na aksidente kasi they have lost yung tamang orientation. Hindi na nila alam yung taas sa baba. To the point na gusto nilang, di ba, yung kunyari, may emergency ka. No, kaya pag tinamaka ka ng panic, na-confuse ka, ang gusto mo, gusto mo maka, no, pumaibabaw. Kung saan may hangin, doon sa surface. Ang problema yung iba, dahil nga na-confuse, nandisorient na, lumalangoy sila, ang iniisip na lumalangoy sila pataas, pero, lumalangoy pala sila pababa. At yung isang uh, number one cause ng accidents or even death sa mga scuba divers, no, yung loss of orientation. No, minsan, hindi lang sa buhay, hindi lang hindi mo alam yung taas sa baba o yung kaliwa sa kanan. Eh. Yung hindi mo alam yung tama sa kamali. Right? Okay? So, and and now, there, nga, sabi ko nga, there are a lot of co- there are a lot of things that would cause people to be disoriented, but I would like to propose someone. No, uh, I, I wrote in my notes. No, nothing disrupts our lives more than when we experience death. Okay, and, and I wrote something here. Sabi ko, death is the great disorientor, orientator. No, tapos nung tinaip ko yon, no lumabas na it is misspelled <laughs> sa word di ba lalabas na merong mali yung spelling so tiningnan ko kung mali ba yung spelling ko apparently walang word na disorientator <laughs> pinauso lang <laughs> but i would like to use that word no yung kung meron death is the if there is one thing that will greatly disorient your life no, I think nothing comes close to experiencing death. No, death is, yun nga, let me coin that term, it is the great disorientator. It disorient ang buhay mo. No, it disrupts your life. No, sabi ng isang, uh, actually this is a, a, a scientist, a doctor no, from the University of Rhode Island. He, she made this, this paper. Okay? And into, into the introduction of her paper, he said something like this. Sabi niya, life is a tragedy in the sense that it amounts to one single contradiction. No? Man will die. No? And knows this, and yet he still does not want to die. He does spend his entire life fighting the battle to survive, though he knows that victory is impossible. That is, victory in the sense of corporeal immortality is impossible. <laughs> Life is a tragedy. In, in what sense now? <laughs> because you know, this one single contradiction. No? <laughs> Tayo, ikaw bilang tao, mamamatay. And we spend no, our lives no, not wanting to... Anyone here, you want to die? They, you know, there are, are 
No? Every now and then we hear of people who commit suicide. In other words, they have, they're just people who just gave up on the idea of life. But on a general level, no, no, we don't want to die. We are, we are scared at the prospect of death. We don't want to talk about it. Not when you're young, not when you're old. Tama ba? Wala. Kahit yung mga mata sabi nga nila, ito yung tinatawag na ano, the elephant in the room. Ayaw niyong pag-usapan. No? Ayaw pag-usapan yung mga last will. Alam natin, darating yun eh. Kasi nga, no, yung reality, bagamat mamamatay tayo, ayaw, ayaw nating mamatay. No? And that's why sabi niya, it's, it's a great tragedy, sabi ni Rachel Foreman. No? Now, John, the apostle, tells us of an account how Jesus dealt with death. And how he helped two women move from a place of disorientation to a place of new orientation. Pasahin natin. Okay. Kanina binasa natin ng konti. No, but right now, let us read the whole story. John chapter 11, verses 1 to 45. Where's my fan? Okay. John chapter 11, verses 1 to 45. Now, a certain man was sick. No? Hindi na po ako mag, uh, magpapakatotoo na ako. Mainit itong suot ko. <laughs> Mainit ngayon, marami tayo. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Now, a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was the Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother Lazarus was sick. No? So the sister sent word to him, sent word to Jesus, Lord, behold, him, he whom you love is sick. So nagpadala daw. So, no, mayroon daw isang tao, ang pangalan niya si Lazarus, no, kapatid niya si Mary sa si Maria, si, I mean si, si Martha sa si Maria, si Mary. And, uh, and apparently, yung kanyang, kanilang kapatid na si Lazarus yun nga, nagkasakit. No? And eventually, nag, no, nag, pinatawag nila si Jesus. Apparently, si Jesus wala doon. Pinatawag nila si Jesus. And sa, ang ganda nung, nung ano, mensahe. No? Sa, sige, sabi, punta kay Jesus. Sabihin mo si Jesus. Sabihin mo yung mahal niya. May sakit. No? But Jesus, when he heard this, he said, the sickness is not, is not to end in death, but for the glory of God so that the Son of God may be glorified by it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister, and her sister, and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Para merong disconnect, no? Sabi doon, Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. So nung nalaman niya daw na may sakit, okay, so dito pag may mahal kayong tao sa buhay, nalaman niyo may sakit, magmamadali na kayo. Tama? <laughs> no? So si emphasize pa, mahal ni Jesus daw si Mary, si Martha, si Lazarus. Kaya nung nalaman niya, ang ganda sana, kaya nung nalaman niya, hindi siya nag-atubili, iniwan niya yung kanyang trabaho, at pinuntahan niya agad si Lazarus. Hindi. Sabi doon, mm, nag-stay pa siya kung saan siya, kung, kung, kung saan siya naroon. <laughs> so parang may disconnect, di ba? Lord, why? Like, okay, you knew he was sick. I thought you loved these people. Go, Lord, go. But then, yun nga eh, Jesus, in a way, you could say that Jesus, no, he, he doesn't panic for things like this. Okay, anyway, so, he then stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, after two days, he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi or teacher, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you. And are you going there again now? Meron nangyari. Prior to this, yung background, meron daw, well, Jesus was there in that place of Judea. Yung mga Hudyo, no, they were so angry with Jesus that they, they, they were even thinking of killing Jesus. So in a way, Jesus escaped that place. And now, when Jesus said, balik tayo doon, sabi ng mga disciples, uh, you really want to go there? Ba't naman tayo babalik doon? Ipapatayin ka nga doon, Lord. Eh. Ayaw nga sa'yo doon. No? Jesus answered, Are there 12 hours in a day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. This he said, and after he said to them, 
no? Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. Okay. So sabi niya na, no, tulog na si Lazarus. Okay. So, I, so I go that I may wake him up from his sleep or I may awaken him. The disciples then said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, in other words, nung nakatulog na siya, maganda na, maganda na pakiramdam niya, nakakatulog na siya. Okay. He will recover. No? Now, Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought he was literally talking about literal sleep. No? Kaya di ba mayroong time term na pag ang isang tao namatay, parang natutulog lang siya. So, akala nila, ang, ang ibig sabihin ni Jesus, natutulog lang si, Jesus, si, si Lazarus, pero ang totoo patay na. So, okay? in other words, hindi nila na-gets. So, dinerecho na lang sila ni Jesus. Patay na si Lazarus. <laughs> Yung binasa natin na yun. No? Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Therefore, Thomas, who is called the Demos, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go so that we may die with him. Honestly, I didn't know, I don't understand what Thomas was trying to say. Was he trying to be spiritual? Lord, we want to go with you so that we can die with you. <laughs> I don't know what, what, what was in Thomas' mind when he said that. So anyway, so when Jesus came, he found out that he had already been in the tomb for four days. In other words, nilibing na si Lazarus. No? And it was already the fourth day no, from the time na nilibing si Lazarus. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. Martha, therefore, when she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him, but Mary stayed at the house. Martha then said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. So, nung na- nabaltaan ka agad di Martha na parating na si Jesus, eh, dali-dali si Martha, he went ahead and, and sinalubong niya si Jesus and, and, and this is what he said, Lord, Lord, kung nandito ka lang sana, di sana namatay ang kapatid ko. No. And, and I want you to see, sometimes when we read the Bible, no, we seldom read it for the drama or the story by which is, no, it is happening. No, I want you to picture this. Martha just lost his brother. And in, in, in her mind, if only Jesus, there's that regret, there's that feeling, of, I, I don't know, no? a feeling of frustration or anger or Halu halu na. In a way, if you think about it, Martha was in a way blaming Jesus, blaming God. Huh? And, then, and in the reality, that's ganun ka painful yung death. Eh, that that sometimes, you no, know, how we wish things were different. You know, now, now Martha was, you no, know, confused. Now, by the way. No? Just a little bit of background. Sino ba tong si Mary, si Martha, si Lazarus to the point na nabanggit dito na eh, that Jesus loved this, this siblings. Mahal niya itong magkakapatid na to. Eh. Gaano ba sila kalapit kay Jesus? This, this, this three no, siblings, itong magkakapatid na to, they were, yun nga, they were special no, in, in Jesus' life. Eh. In the account of the Gospel of Luke, no, meron isang kwento no, na kung saan Si Jesus ay uh, naging guest no sa bahay mismo ni Lazarus ni Mary ni Martha. Ito yung account na pinakain pa nga ni Martha yung mga disciples no habang si Jesus nagtuturo tapos si Mary no talagang excited lang na nakikinig, nagkaroon pa nga ng konting commotion kasi itong si Martha no punong abala. I mean no hindi na siya magkamayaw no sa pagprepare ng pagkain no to naman kasi si Jesus siya lang inibata nagdala pa ng mga labing dalawang mga lalaki di ba so so medyo can imagine feeding 12 hungry men okay no 13 in all plus Jesus and and then and, and, and Martha of course i mean if you had Jesus as your guest sino dito talaga naman talagang maghahanda ka ng special tama ba i mean you're preparing ah, so Martha was preparing all in and and si Mary, yung kanyang kapatid, I don't know where Lazarus was, but then, the story is about Martha and Mary, and Mary was just sitting there, you know, just enjoying Jesus' teach. And then, sabi ni Martha, Lord, pagsabihan mo yung kapatid ko, 
Ako po po lang. Anyway, that's another story. Pero yun nga, ganun, ganun sila kalapit. No? I mean, you have Jesus as guest, so they really had a relationship with Jesus. If, no, not just a spiritual relationship, a literal physical, I mean, you had Jesus as your guest. They were friends of Jesus. No, so, and that's why Martha was, in a way, sabi natin, so honest and bold enough to actually tell Jesus, Lord, if you have been here. In other words, he was maybe, no, she was questioning, Lord, why were you not here? But wala ka. Nasaan ka, Lord? No? But then Jesus said to her, ito. Okay. By the way, may sinabi pa si Martha, sabi ni, sabi ni Martha dito, okay, Lord, if you have been here, my brother would not have died. Even now, I know whatever you ask God of God, God will give you. Bumawi naman siya. It's a matter of... Sabi niya, Lord, kung nandito ka, sana. Hindi sana matay si Lazarus. Pero Lord, alam ko naman na, no, even now, kahit ngayon, whatever you ask of God, God will give you now. I'm not... Eh, okay. Have you ever said things or posted stuff, memes, good memes, spiritual memes that totally make sense, religious, and then you agree with it, but when it comes to actually believing it, you're not really sure. I mean, it's, it's just, just playing, you know, playing religion. Ganti, nakita mo, nabasa mo, ganda ng memes, shiner mo. And then, in, in other words, Martha was... Saying something good. I mean, no, for for being probably being religious, being a Christian, no. But man, mama, yah, malalaman natin ng me what she said. Ang ganda si Rabbi. Even now, Lord. Now you might think that Martha was operating from faith, like even now, Lord. I know that whatever you ask, it shall be done for you. And and it would have been nice, like, wow. And you'll see later on, okay? So, Jesus said to her, I, ito na, the revelation, I am the resurrection and the life. No? Sabi ni, sabi ni Jesus dito, no? your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. So, okay, Jesus tells her, mabubuhay ang kapatid mo. <laughs> I know. In the resurrection in the last day. Um, Martha, I am. It's like, I think you're missing the point. I am. I am the resurrection and the life. No, kanda ng sinabi dito. Okay, sabi yung. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. Sige, go ahead. No? And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And so Martha was now confronted with a question. Okay? Because apparently there was a condition to this idea of being able to rise up again. Not only of being able to rise up again, but experiencing itong tinatawag na life. Eh, no? I mean, everyone who believes, who lives and believes in me, it, in other words, now, this, you know, what Jesus is saying is now transcending, you know, not only, the question is, not only for Martha, but for every one of us. Okay? Do you believe this? Now, I want to ask you that, ikaw, personally, like, sometimes in your head, you believe and you agree, but in your heart, there's a, like, Sino sa inyo na mayroong ganong dilemma, may ganong struggle? Okay? And, and apparently, Martha said, okay, go ahead. No? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, even He who comes into her, to the world. You are the Messiah, you're the Savior. Sabi niya, when she said this, she went away and called Mary, her sister, saying secretly, the teacher is here and is calling for you. Go ahead. And when she heard it, she got up, no, si Mary na to, and quickly... Got up quickly and was coming to him. 
Okay? Now, Jesus has not yet come into the village, but was still in a place where Martha met him. Okay, okay. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and consoling her, when they saw that Mary got up quickly and went out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Therefore, when Mary came where Jesus was, she saw him and fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Exactly the same words that Martha said. Sabi ni Mary, no, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Next. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in the spirit and was troubled. And said, where have you laid him? They said, Lord, come and see. Verse 35. And Jesus wept. Okay. Sige, tuloy natin. So the Jews were saying, see how he loved him. But in a quick question. But some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind have kept this man from also dying? So Jesus, again, being deeply moved within, came to the tomb. Now it was a cave and a stone was lying against it. In fact, I, I'm not sure if you kept uh, if, uh, the, in the, the slides. No? I, made a, I made an additional title. No? Yung title ko is, He Still Moves Stones. Okay? And then the series, I Am the Resurrection and the Life. No? <laughs> because I want you to understand that. Jesus no, still moves stones. Anyway, I'll, I'll explain that later. So, Jesus said, remove the stone. Martha, the sister of the deceased, said to him, Lord, by this time, there will be a stench for he has been dead for four days. Okay, okay. Just a while ago, Martha was saying, Lord, I know whatever you ask, it shall be done to you. And, and if you think about it, it was not not because she actually believed that, but it was just... Uh, the right thing to say. Yun nga, no? yung, yung tanong kanina, how many of you have said things, posted things, no memes that you shared, because, well, it's, it's the right thing to say. It's, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. But in a way, you're not really sure whether you are willing to believe it and apply it in your life. No? Kasi kung, kung si Martha... No, and, and then, sinabi pa ni Jesus sa kanya, you, you would have thought that she got it already. Jesus said, Martha, your brother will rise again. And then she said, I know he will rise. Ganda, yun nga, no, mga, no, apparently, Martha has somehow, somehow knows a little bit of no, theology and the Bible. He has somehow an understanding of of death and resurrection. That He, she, he was actually affirming Jesus. What she was saying was not wrong. Sabi niya, Lord, I know. And the resurrection in the last day. And then the bomb that Jesus drops, I am. And you would have thought that Martha, at that moment, like, got it. And she was even confronted by Jesus. Do you believe, Martha? Martha, do you believe? She says, yes, I believe. Now, well, what's going on here? So sabi ni Lord, patanggalin ba to? Kasi you, you need to understand yung mga Yung, yung cementerio po, no, hindi katulad ng cementerio natin ngayon, nasa lupa. No? Yung cementerio, no, nilalagay yung mga tao sa, sa parang ano, um, a cave, and then no, they put, they seal the cave with a huge stone. No? And, and no, parang hindi, hindi magiging masangsang at eventually, doon na mabubulok yung, yung tao na nilibing. So sabi ni Jesus, okay, remove the stone. And si Marta agad yung Lord, no. Ano sabi dyan? Okay. There will be a stench. Check the King James Version. Sabi niya, ang ganda nung King James. Ayaw pa, ayaw pa bukas ni Martha. Sabi ni Martha, he stinketh. <laughs> no? and, and, <laughs> sino dito sa inyo, no? Ay yung parol away, yung mga stones. No, in your life. Because apparently if it is on road, you know, you stink it. <laughs> eh, 
to those who have ears, let them hear. In other words, there are just things in our lives that we don't want others to see. Like, how, how many, how many, you know, how many know that your life stinks? That there are really a lot of things in our life that we don't, yeah, it, it stinks. It, it, it's not good. So, sabi dito, stink it for he had been dead for four days. Apat na araw ng patay. By this time, nag-decompose na tong tama ba na masangsang na amoy. Okay. And then Jesus, Jesus had removed the stone. Martha, the sister of the deceased, said to him, Lord, by the, okay, next. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Next. So they removed the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Post muna tayo dyan. Okay. So, balikan natin yung, yung pinahayag ko kanina no, about the see the three scenarios that we are with, that we can find our lives in a place of orientation a place of disorientation and a place of new orientation now prior to the to the sickness and the death of Lazarus you know we can safely assume that no Lazarus Martha and Mary was in a good place of orientation things were fine not only were things fine things were things were comfortable no, not only were things comfortable, things were probably great. I mean, hey, Jesus is your friend. <laughs> what could not, no, I don't, I, can, I cannot think of any other thing better than that. Jesus goes to their house. No, kumakain si Jesus sa, sa, sa table nila. So they were friends with Jesus. No, a life that is, no, had a clear orientation, things are doing well, things are comfortable. No, pero ano nangyari? Okay. So ano nga yung yung, orient, yung place of orientation no, no? familiar day-to-day life no that you are accustomed to. Pero ano nga nangyari dito? All of a sudden, for reasons we don't understand, Lazarus got sick. We don't understand his sickness. It was never mentioned. At first, this, they probably dismissed the sickness as no. La, ano lang yan, sipon lang yan. Okay. Sino nagka-COVID dito? Sabi mo, wala, wala ito. <laughs> Sabi mo, hindi, na, uh, nalamigan lang ako. <laughs> no, yan, kakalamig, lahat tuloy hinawaan mo. <laughs> Di ba? <laughs> Isang ganyan tayo, we just dismiss it. And then, no, na, nalamigan din, nabula ako, na, nalamigan lang ako. No? No, naulanan lang. Hindi, ano, gutom lang ito, napagod lang kasi ako, napuyat lang ako. But then, maybe, maybe at first it was something like that. They were probably thought it was nothing. It was just, no, yeah, maybe a flu or colds. But then as they, days passed by, things were not getting any better for Lazarus. In fact, yeah, it was becoming really bad. It was becoming worse. To the point, na, ito, how, how do we know that it got worse? Mary and Martha decided that it was time to call Jesus. I mean, you know something is bad if God is your last resort. <laughs> right? Pag kunyari, kakayaanin mo, hindi ka pa tumatawag sa Lord. Eh. Kung yung sakit, una doctor. Pero pag, wala, pag yung doctor, wala na magawa. Yan na eh, talagang si Lord na yung pinapatawag mo eh. Okay? Eh? No, so, so they 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 call they call for Jesus and, and still in a way there was no big deal, right? First of all, they were Christians. They eh, they know that and not only were they Christians. Ganda nung simula nung ano sabi ito. Binasa natin kanina, Jesus loved them, and so there was that assurance. I mean. What can possibly go wrong? They were friends with Jesus. Not only were they friends with Jesus, Jesus loved them. In fact, yung message, yung message nung ano, message nila kay Jesus, sabihin mo kay Jesus, yung mahal niya, may sakit. Lakas din ang loob nito mga to. <laughs> Hindi lang sinabi may sakit. Sabihin mo yung mahal niya, huwag mong kakalimutan. Yung, and they had that confidence. And then, and, 
And it was not, I don't think that they were even bragging. It was just probably a fact that was known to them. Okay? They, they knew for a fact that Lazarus you know, was someone that Jesus loved. And, and even, even the Bible affirms that. Okay? But yun nga, you know, when Jesus heard the news, rather than going, Jesus chose to stay. Sabi niya, two more days. And then sabi niya, it's time to go. By the time that he said it's time to go, it is because Lazarus already died. Now, balik tayo kay Mary and Martha. No? We all know that death is tragic. Okay? Why? First of all, allow me to, to give you this. Anon. I, I tried to ask Kanina, why is death tragic? Why is it tragic? Allow me to propose two things. No? Number one, death is tragic because you and I, as human beings, deep inside of us, we know that we are eternal beings. Okay? <laughs> how, do you, how do you know that? Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. No, sabi dito, no? Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. Look at this verse. No? Okay? He has set also eternity in the human heart, and yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to the end. Okay? God has set eternity in the hearts of Humans. Okay? And that's why no, meron, no, we are hunted this idea of forever. Ba? Are you there? When you talk about love, no, you, you wish for a love that is forever. A love that would last you a lifetime. An eternal love. Why do we have such concepts as forever? Why? Yun nga, babalik tayo dun sa sinabi kanina. No? Despite the fact na alam natin mamamatay tayo, pero bakit ayaw natin mamatay? Kasi nga, Diyos mismo yung nagdesenyo sa puso natin that no, God has set eternity in the heart of man. Eh, that's why, okay, in, in a way, yung mga coping mechanisms natin with death, no, pag may namatay, anong ginagawa natin? Why do we put a tombstone? Okay, lapida. A marker, usually, yun nga, yung, yung marker na yung lapida, it is etched in stone. No, kaya kahit paano, umulan, umaraw, no, hindi nawawala yung ala-ala niya kasi, you know, despite the fact that it is exposed to all weathers, kahit paano, naka, yun makikita. Nakait yung pangalan niya sa bato kasi nga ayaw natin na malimutan ang taong namatay. No, gusto natin na yun nga mananati, despite wala na siya, mananati lito sa ating alaala. Bakit natin pinapangalan ng mga gusali, ang mga streets, no, sa mga taong na mayapa na? Kasi nga there is that idea no, that somehow we want that person's no, uh, memory to remain. And why is that? Because God has set eternity in the heart of man. Are you there? You cannot, you cannot escape that fact. You cannot escape that reality. You and I are eternal beings. Are you there? I remember sharing this. No? Why do we have this idea of, for example, vampires? Is it, no? Ano ni mga vampira, di ba? No? Is it because of a, a, a thirst for blood or something. No, no. Well, one of the characteristics of vampires, they're, they're in a way immortal. We long for immortality. And that's why we have these crazy ideas about these things. Because deep inside of us, no, we want to live in, you know, we want to live in eternity. Okay? Ang ganda dyan sa, sa The Voice Translation. God has also placed in our minds a sense of eternity. It is an inescapable thing. Okay? Death, you need to understand, why tragic yung death? Because death from the very beginning was not God's design for humanity. It was His design for you and me to live in eternity. No? And bakit meron kamatayan? Ba't natin kinakaharap ito? Okay? 
because it was a result of man's fall, man's disobedience, man's sin. No? Gen- just a little bit of review. At the beginning of the Bible, Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 to 17, the Lord commanded man. Ang ganda ng, ang ganda ng ginawa ng Diyos para kay Adan, di ba? He placed man in the middle of this beautiful garden. There was no, pansin niyo, during that time, there was no sickness, no pandemic. No, there was no lack. He was well provided. No, he was in paradise. Diba? How many of you, we have this, why are we also haunted by this idea of going, in, going to paradise? No, pag kunyari, nag-isip tayo ng bakasyon, parang inisip natin, malaparaisong bakasyon. No, tama? Kasi nga, why are we haunted with that? No, kasi there is that inescapable reality that somehow in, in the recesses of our minds, no, nandun eh, nakangarap tayo ng bagay na nawala sa atin. Eh? Bakit ka nag, nag, naglolong para sa paraiso kung hindi naman totoo ang paraiso? O baka dahil totoo ito? Ngayon yung gustong klase na buhay na meron ka. No? So ito sabi ng Lord, diba? Genesis 2, 16 to 17, The Lord commanded man, saying, From any tree of the garden you may eat freely, but from the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For the day that you eat from it, you will surely die. And, and we know the story. Adam and Eve did eat. They disobeyed God. And as a result, no, humanity and the whole world fell into sin. And, and yun nga, pumasok ang curse, pumasok ang sakit, pumasok ang kamatayan. In Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4, no? Behold, all souls are mine, says the Lord. The soul of the Father as well as the soul of the Son is mine. And check this out. This is what the Lord said. The soul that sins will die. That's why we are confronted with death. And it's crazy because here you are, supposedly eternal beings, wanting this idea of a love that would last forever. Diba? No, talungin niyo, diba? Lahat, nag-umaasa, nag, nag, nangangarap. No, na magkaroon sila ng pag-ibig na walang hanggan. Buhay na walang hanggan. No? But then sabi dito, yung reality, the soul that sins will die. Now you know why you're going to die. <laughs> because you're a sinner. And it's sad. Right? Romans 6.23. No? The, the voice translation sabi dito, no? the payoff for a life of sin is death. No? And in the King James translation, no, the wages, the salary, the payment, yung, the payoff for sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through, the, through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, okay. So, that by itself, no, yung kamatayan, tragic ni. Kasi nga, you know, we want eternity and we were supposedly born for and designed for eternity and now we are confronted with death. And sabi nga nung, nung kanina nung, nung si Dr. Uh, Rachel Fornham sabi niya, it's, it's a tragedy because no, we spend our lives fighting it. Okay. But there's the second reason. The second reason why death no, it's tragic. And why, why I say that it is the great disorientator. No? Check this out. Because, because of the disorient, no? death is tragic because of the disorientation it leaves behind. Okay? And I, I wrote here in my notes, I go, though death can be a tra- tragic for the one who died, especially for those who have no hope of eternity, it is equally tragic for the ones that are left behind. Okay? It's one thing na ikaw yung mamatay. <laughs> and it's another na ikaw yung mamatayan. And I don't know about you. I don't know how many of you here have, have experienced losing somebody. No? Kay kamatayan. Okay? Balik tayo kay Mary, kay Mary and Martha, no? 
No? Sa perspective ni Mary and Martha, they were hoping Jesus would come. They waited and waited. I mean, <laughs> there is every reason why Jesus would come, right? They were friends. They were close. They knew Jesus loved them. And so they wait. They hope expectantly. They wait and wait and wait. And as they wait, they see all the more. Check this out. Their brother continually suffer in pain, continually grow weak until one day. I don't know. We, we could just use our imagination. Was it possible that they actually saw Lazarus' last breath? <sighs> He's no more. And what happens? No? You know, as the result, grief, despair, their whole world collapses. No, there is what total disorientation. No, they're confused. Their faith is now under attack. No? The, the future now becomes uncertain. Like their hopes are now clouded with doubts. You know, pansinin nyo, that is what death does. No? Dati, you, you can be so sure of yourself, so sure of your plans. No? You even plan with people, pero pag yung, ikaw yung namatayan, di ba? <laughs> Naisip ko nga eh, pag, pag ang isang tao namatayan, bakit siya tragic? No? Kasi hindi lang namamatay yung tao eh. May mga ilang bagay na kasamang namamatay nito. Namamatay yung idea na, yun nga, na hindi mo na siya makikita muli. Di ba? Hindi lang yun, namamatay yung mga plano. Naalala ko yung, yung, yung pinsan ko nung namatay. And they, they even had plans of, of a business. And, eh? and that is just devastating. Di ba? Parang oh, yung manarinig mo minsan, oh, no, di ba sabi mo magagraduate ka pa? Di ba sabi mo, Tay, abangan mo pa yung graduation ko? Di ba, Tay, di ba? No, kakasal pa ako sino maghahatid sa all those di ba sabi mo hindi mo ako iiwan yung mga ganun no? it leaves you disoriented okay. sabi ni I, I was reading this article no? by uh, Bachara Kwadya I don't know this guy, pero marami, maganda yung sinabi niya. No, sabi niya, and then he wrote an article, uh, 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 an online blog, The Tragedy of Death. And this is what he said, The tragedy of death isn't the pain of dying. It is, isn't in the pain of dying, nor in its fear, but in the shock waves that it creates. No, yet once death isn't a tragedy that follows the human, rather it's, no, it's everything he left behind. Hey. Pag namatay kasi hindi pag na, pag sabi nito, no, ganun sabi. You will not grieve yourself. You will not shed a tear for yourself after you die. Mga bandito namatay tas iniyak niya si. Tay na ako. <laughs> Wala, di ba? Eh, hindi mo pwedeng iyakan na sarili mo. Hey. It's those who stay behind that feel the wrath of death and feel the toll that has been put upon the absence of one's permanent presence. Wow. And I wrote here, no, there, death is tragic not only because a person has died, you know, but because there's so many other things that die with that person. Your plans, no, your dreams. No, in Psalms 146 verse 4, Psalm 146 verse 4, sabi, as soon as their breath leaves them, they return to the earth. On that day, all of them perish. Their dreams, their plans, their memories. And that is what's so painful. It's not only the person dying, it's that itself is tragic. Pero dun sa mga iniwan na yung ay merong pangungulila. Di ba? And why? Yung mga pangarap, pangarap yung dalawa. No? Yung dreams. 
I remember when my dad died, I think, about five years ago. No? And, and ever since siguro namulat ako sa, nagkaroon ako ng isip, I know my dad had, no, uh, I know that he had escaped death so many times. My dad was a kidney transplant patient. No? Uh, one of the first kidney transplant patients no, in the Philippines. Okay, so, ibig sabihin nun, no, nasira na yung, yung dalawang kidney niya, tapos pinalitan. In fact, yung, yung doktor nung tatay ko, yung doktor ni Ferdinand Marcos Sr. No? And uh, just a footnote, no, that, that doctor, because they were trying, if you know your history, they were trying so hard to keep the fact that Marcos was sick. No? That she, you know, he suffered kidney failure. No? Ferdinand Marcos Sr. No? But when it came out, somehow it did came out, they were trying to keep it and just, you know, to, to, to project that Ferdinand Marcos was still strong and capable of being president. So we were trying to hide all that. No? And yung doctor niya was the best doctor in the Philippines at that time by the name of Dr. Bakay, which was the doctor of my dad. He operated on my dad. And, uh, and when, when, when word came, came out that Marcos was sick, kidney failure, and that, yun nga, no, apparently they blamed this doctor and he was assassinated. Okay? Still now unresolved. 21 stab wounds, 19 in the heart. Right? And that's a personal experience. No, just letting you know a little bit of history that is being revised. That is personal experience. That doctor is one of my heroes. I remember when, eh, yung, nung bata, di ba, yung sa, sa creative writing, pinapasulat kayo ng your most memorable experience. I would always talk about that doctor. No, that was, yeah, he was murdered in cold blood just because he was blamed for squealing you know, the true condition of Ferdinand Marcos. Anyway, okay. So, yeah, no. So faith, no. So going back to ano, to to Martha, no, and Mary. Can you imagine yun yung, yung disorientation that? Uh, ah, okay. I was told, telling about my dad, no. So noon pa man may sakit na yung dad ko, okay? And then nagkakancer pa yung tatay ko, nagka-stroke, nagka-heart attack, no, lahat ng klase, okay? And so, nung Somehow, I was only grade, I was only what, uh, six years old. I could have lost my dad when I was six. And so all my growing up here, somehow I knew that there's that really that chance that I could lose my dad anytime. I mean, he suffered two kidney transplants, for the record. One was when I was, you know, I was six years old you know, in pre preparatory school. The other one when I was first year college. No, it, it, in other words, nasira ulit yung unang na-transplant. Another one. And then he had cancer no, sa sinus. And then he had so, and stroke, heart attack. So somehow, I've always tried to prepare myself for that day. And I'm going to lose my dad. Eventually, nung alam na namin that it was almost time. In fact, Na-survive niya kidney transplant, na-survive niya ang cancer, na-survive niya heart attack, na-survive niya stroke. Yung, yung dumali sa kanya, tuberculosis. <laughs> no? And that was about five years ago. And I remember, nung, nung, nung nangihina na yung dad ko, tas alam namin na close na, close na, no? in terms of, ano, uh, nandun kami lahat buong family, yung dalawa kong kapatid na babae, tapos ako, tas yung mom ko, tas nandun ako para, ako yung lalaki, ako yung lalaki, no? Eh, ako yung supposedly magko-comfort. Malaki. Eh, so, pinapataw, uh, nagpapaalam na kami. Tapos, no, itong sister ko isa, si Rida, yung pang sumunod sa akin, may, may sinabi, so, okay naman. No? Strong and preparing. and Yeah, we can do this. Pero sabi niyo, pa, okay, I remember the good, ano ha, yung mga memories, yung maganda memories. Nung sinabi nung kapatid ko, biglang nag-flashback sa akin lahat <laughs> nung mga magagandang alaala. Tapos para bang biglang nag-flood yung emotion. Talagang, no? Ako yung, ako yung lalaki, no? Ako yung dapat mag-comfort. Wala, bumigay po ako. 
hours cry uncontrollably yung nanay ko yung nagko-comfort sa akin. <laughs> Tapos, hindi ba patay yung tatay ko? Sabi nga, sabi nga, kung ano ba naman kuya? Gusto nga akong kurutin. Gusto, mas lalong malungkot si papa niya. Hindi pa siya patay. Pero ito na ako, nag-ahagulula. And, and, and I realized, you know, no, no, no. Nothing. No matter how much you prepare for death, nothing prepares you for death. Nothing. The pain, the disorientation. No? Sabi ni Annabel Manzanilla in his book, The Season of Grief, I believe this is published by OMF Literature. He talks about this as well. He talks about faith disorientation. Ano yung the faith is disorientation? Faith disorientation is a crisis of faith that can result from suffering grave losses. It involves a ser- having serious doubts about the existence of God. His character, His sovereignty, His providence. <laughs> and, 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 si Martha, you, makikita nyo, nandun na si. No, yeah, da- Lord, if you were just here. Lord, if you were just here. Or maybe we have a different, no, kung nandun lang sana ako. Nakita ko man, alam ko lang sana. Ganun eh. Okay? Lord, but hindi mo man lang ako hihintay papunta naman na kay mga ganon, no? And you question the character of God, yung providence niya, yung sovereignty niya, no? It puts into question our faith assumptions in our relationship with God, no? Is characterized by doubt, dududa ka na, frustration, fear, even anger. Hindi ko, hindi ba galit si Mary? Baka may galit na rin ang halo. Lord! Lord! Diba? Tampo. Huh? You know, yung challenge dito is how we, how we move from this. We don't like to be uncomfortable. We don't like to be disrupted. We don't like change. And we certainly do not like pain and suffering. No? In fact, kung pwede lang skip yung disorientation eh, at or reorientation gagad. No? Pero may sinabi dito no, sa article na binasa ko, sabi, but to avoid this orientation, to ginagawa na yung maling ginagawa, we look for ways to numb, to escape, and to keep the suffering at bay. Ah, yung iba tinatakasan eh. No, tina, minsan tinatay mo magmamanhid ka na lang. Or yung tinatawag na in denial. Now, and why I love, love the story of resurrection. No? No, this is the first time I'm, I'm using a different story. Okay, kasi usually in Resurrection Sundays, I talk about the road to Emmaus. But it's similar. Here were two disciples who put their trust on Jesus. And now, they saw their Messiah, their hope, their King crucified helplessly. And when their lives started to fall apart, di ba? Gulo ng buhay nila. No? Tapos anong ginawa ng dalawang disciples? They were running away. The road to Emmaus. No, the place where you run away. The place where you're confused. But it is also the place that God meets you. I love that story. Anyway, so, it's a question. How does God, how does Jesus help us navigate to this orientation? Okay. And why is this so powerful for us? No. Number one, and can I... I'm about to close, no? so I have the worship team back. Just three quick things. Number one, we learn to lament. We learn to lament. No, ano yung sabihin ng lament? If you look at the story, Jesus doesn't rebuke Martha nor Mary for their sorrow. Okay? God doesn't want you to be in denial of whatever loss or suffering that you're going through. No, God doesn't want you to be in denial. No? Lament is the language no, of disorientation. No? On those days when our emotions feel overwhelming and more than we can handle, we can bring them to God. Okay? 
Lament helps us stay current in the condition of our souls and brings us in the place of, check this out, intimacy and presence that we so desperately need and desire. Lament does not change our circumstances. It changes our perspective. Ah. No, yun nga, yung, yung pag-iyak mo, yung pagtangis mo, yung paghagulhul mo, Sino dang naghahagulhul dito na bago yung <laughs> no, na bago yung circumstances nila? Wala eh. Pero when you lament, and God wants us to lament, something changes. It changes our perspective. No? Graham Cook says this. Worship, when you talk about worship, this worship, and, and when, you, when you worship during time of sorrow, time of grief, and you will see this in the Psalms. Many, you know, the Psalms, there were Psalms of lament. There were Psalms of disorientation. When God seems to be not answering. You know, Lord, if you have not, if you were, and can you imagine what Mary and Martha was probably asking, Lord, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? No, and sabi ni Graham Cook, this worship isn't done in order to have God remove the pain. It simply recognizes that God stands in the moment with us. Did you get that? Huh? And, and that's why, for those of you who know, who, you know what this means. No? Some of the greatest moments of worship that you could probably have, that you remember in your life, is when you are going through pain kung bakit naman napakasakit siya namang napakalapit ni Lord napakatamis nung presence niya tama? Oh, you can sing songs like no, through it all right? right? or no matter what I feel no matter what I do And lang, you don't want the pain, but then it is through the pain that we have a greater understanding of God. Many times it happens when we encounter death. Because it is only in death that one experience. Okay, check this out. You will never experience resurrection until you go through a process of dying. There can be no resurrection. Walang pagkabuhay kung walang namatay. Amen. And you look at the verses na sabi doon, no, in the morning is replaced with dancing. Okay? Pangalawa, so we lament, it's okay. No, grieve, cry. No, be honest. God wants us to be honest with ourselves. Be honest with our grief. He doesn't want you to be in denial. Pangalawa, come to Jesus. You can say it, say it with me, come to Jesus. John chapter 11, verse 28 to 29. When she said this, she went away and called Mary, her sister, saying secretly, the teacher is here and is calling for you. I love that part. And how many of us recognize that? That when you go through death, whether a death of a dream, a death of a, of a hope, a death of a loved one, you know, there, there are many, many things in our lives that may die. It's not only the, the, the physical aspect of losing somebody, pero minsan yung pangarap na mamatay. Yung pag-asa na mamatay. Nung nawawala ka ng pag-asa. I, I love this part because in the midst of that, the teacher is calling for you. 
there is an invitation for you to come and never forget that. Sometimes people miss that out. And that's why they remain disoriented. They remain hopeless because they never see that in the midst of that pain, no, yun nga sabi na yun, no? okay? the pains and the sufferings of, our, of life is it's God's you know, shouting to you, calling you. Yung frustration, yung mga, minsan pag studyante, iba-iba yan eh. Pagbagsak, na broken heart ka. I love that word. The teacher is calling to you. He's calling to you. And when she heard it, look at Mary's response. When she heard it, she got up quickly and, and was coming to him. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Amen. Come to Jesus in your pain. Come to Jesus in your grief. Come to Jesus in your frustration. Come to Jesus when your dreams have died. Come to Jesus. Therefore, Mary, when, when Mary came where Jesus was, she saw him and was coming to him. Therefore, when Mary, okay, she saw him and he fell at his feet, saying to him, Now, look at this. Mary was, same words, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said, Come, Lord, and see. And Jesus wept. Now, okay. There's something interesting here. We're talking about Jesus. We're talking about, no, we're talking about God, no, who can give life. And I'm sure Jesus already knew what he was about to do. And if you think about it, there was no reason for Jesus to be sad. I'm, I'm thinking if I were Jesus and I'm I'm gonna come there, okay. Sa si Lazarus. Nakita kong miyak, si Mary. Miyak yung mga tao. I mean, I could, I could raise up. No, 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 no. And then here is the intersection of the divinity and the humanity of Jesus. Here is a God. Here is God who, no, sabi dito, bakit ganun? Naramdam, ang sarap, naramdaman ni Jesus, na Jesus, nagsimpatay siya eh. Isaiah 53, verse 3 to 4. No, Isaiah prophesied about this Messiah. He was despised and rejected, forsaken by men, a man of sorrows and pains. He is acquainted, this Jesus that we're talking about. No, he is familiar, acquainted with grief and sickness. Like one whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we did not appreciate him. His worth have, uh, uh, many did not appreciate his worth and have esteem for him surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows I mean, griefs our sicknesses our weakness our distresses and carried our sorrows and pains of punishment <laughs> Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 to 16 for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with us and understand our weakness and temptations but one who has been tempted knowing exactly how it feels to be human isn't that amazing that this God that we serve is a God who understands you who knows your pain he knows your grief hey, he, he's not he's not a stranger who simply like oh he's not just God who is far and watching you from a distance God you know, came down I've always been thinking Lord can you not have saved the world by being just God then we have a God who what? Sabi dito, who knows and can sympathize with us. No? And look at this. No? Therefore, therefore, let us, that's you and me, with privilege approach the throne of grace, that is the throne of God's favor, with confidence and without fear, so that we may receive mercy for our failures and find His amazing grace to help in time of need, an appropriate blessing coming at the right moment. In the message translation, ganda dito, now that we know what we have, Jesus, who do you have? It's Jesus, not religion. It's Jesus, this great high priest with ready access to God. 
Let us not slip through, let, let it not slip through your fingers. We don't have a priest who is out of touch. We don't have a no, we don't serve a God who is out of touch. No, with our reality, he's been through weakness and testing, experience it all. All but sin. So let us walk right up to him and get what he is ready to give. Take mercy, accept the help. Take it, take the mercy, take that free grace. And that is the gospel. That is good news. Okay. Come to Jesus. And finally, believe. John chapter 11, verse 21 to 27, 39 to 40. Martha then said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know whether you, whatever you ask God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Okay. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again. In the resurrection to the la on the last day, Jesus said to her, I am. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, he who believes in me, he who believes in me. And I want to ask you right now, you know, do you believe? I'm not talking about religion. I'm not I'm talking about a trust. Do you trust him for all that he is and all that he claims to be? No. Even if he dies, Abidito, he believes in me. No. He will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have believed that you are the Christ, the Son of God, he who comes in the world. Verse 39, Jesus said, Remove the stone. Martha, the sister of the deceased, said to her, him, Lord, by this time there will be a stench. Ah, Martha was, he was struggling, right? I think she wanted to believe it's the right thing to say. But when it comes to now, Lord, but not Christ and I've been a Lord Martha. Did I not tell you? If you believe, you will see the glory of God. And so Jesus had a stone removed. Let's conclude. John chapter 11 verse 40 to 45 and he had said these things I love this part so the stone has been removed and Jesus speaks I'm, I'm trying to picture this as the greatest stare down. <laughs> ano yung stare down? <laughs> Kunyari in, in, in basketball, pag kunyari, nag-dunk, nadunkan mo yung kalaban. So, it's a stare down. Okay. From the very beginning, from the time of Adam and Eve, death has always took life. yung mga pinakamalalakas na tao na matay. Yung pinakahilti na mga tao na matay. Yung pinakamatatalinong tao na matay. Kings, emperors, leaders. When it was time for them to when it was time for them to face death, they died. They succumbed. They were defeated. From the great emperors of the past to the present day leaders. Talk about Alexander the Great, you know, Genghis Khan, all the way to Hitler. Oh, sino pa man yan? But Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. No, it was good that Jesus called out Lazarus. Because I think that would have been crazy if Jesus just said, come forth. <laughs> Without any name. 
everyone in that seminary would have risen up because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Amen. And so we don't know. And the man who had died, you know, the man who had died came forth, bound hand and foot, wrappings in his face. Because he said, "Parang mahami no, no, may mga tali tali pa." And Jesus said to him, "Man, bind him, let him go." Therefore, many of the Jews came to Mary and saw what had happened and believed in him. Okay. The greatest, you no, know, fast, fast forward. Jesus eventually died, and he himself. Conquer the grave, and I just like to read this, this verse. And there's, there's a lot. No? You need to understand resurrection. Jesus rising from the dead is a fact. It has been argued, okay, debated about. No arguments, evidence have been presented in the court of, in, in, in under the regulations of law. I'm not talking about. No, tiningnan yung mga evidences. This is not, this is not science fiction. This is not you know, fables or myths. This is not fake news. There is enough historical evidence that points out that Jesus indeed died and 2,000 years ago, He rose again from the dead and He is the only one who can cause people to rise from the dead. And I don't know if it is something about inside of you that has died but God is ready to raise you up again. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 4, verse 13 to 18. Beloved brothers, we want you to be quite certain about the truth concerning those who have passed away so that you won't be overwhelmed with grief like many others who have no hope. Yung pala yun, pag wala kang idea ng resurrection. No, no. Okay? For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, we also believe that God will bring with Jesus those who died while believing in Him. This is the word of the Lord. We who are alive in Him and remain on earth when the Lord appears will by no means have an advantage over those who have already died for both will rise together. For the Lord Himself will appear with a de declaration of victory, the shout of an archangel in the trumpet blast of God. He will descend from the heavenly realm and command those who are dead in Christ to rise first. Then we who are alive will join them transported together in the clouds to have an encounter with the Lord in the air. And we will be forever joined with the Lord. So encourage one another with this truth. Why are you not to give up? Why are you to keep on trusting, believing in Jesus? Because of the hope of resurrection. Our God is risen. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a clap. Come on. Can we all stand right now? You know, there's there's something about the story of Mary and Martha that I've I've tried to wrestle with. Martha, check, check this out. I just like to add this. Remember, Martha was the first one who came to Jesus. And Jesus said to her, and, and she said to Jesus, Lord, if you have if you were here, my brother would not have died. And you know what? She got an awesome Bible study. She got, I mean, it wasn't to Mary that Jesus thought that he was the resurrection and the life. It was to Martha. Isn't that amazing? Martha, your brother will rise again. I'm the resurrection and the life. Amazing, amazing Bibles. Amazing information. A few minutes later, her sister Mary comes. Same words. Lord, if you have not been, if you haven't been here, my brother would not have died. Now Jesus could have simply said the same. Mary, your brother will rise again. He doesn't say anything. Because I mean, he was deeply, Jesus was deeply moved. He was deeply moved. And he wept. I'm trying to understand that.
there was something about Mary. And I'm, I'm just thinking, oh, Lord, I want to be in that place. Martha was, yeah, Martha was who loved as well. He, he was the one who got, the reason we're talking about this is because the revelation was revealed to Martha. But I don't want, okay, my, my point is, I don't want to have a Bible study. <laughs> Martha got a great Bible study. He got content. Mary got the miracle. Amen. I mean, of course, we both got the miracle. But if you know what I'm trying to say, it was when Mary told, Lord, if you have been here, that Jesus was so moved. Let's go. Let's, and he, Jesus starts to weep. She could, she could, Jesus could not but help Mary. And I don't know about you. I, I, there's something there. Mary was able to move Jesus in that way. There's a certain intimacy, a relationship between the two. I think I would, I want to be like Mary. I mean, I, I'd like to be Martha, but. You know what I'm saying? Let's pray. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, God, just, just worship the Lord right now. Lord.
who don't for God so loved the world that He gave His Son that whosoever believes will not perish but have everlasting life. And if right now, you know, maybe, I don't know what you're going through. Maybe, maybe some of you are going through some kind of faith, disorientation. You're, you're not really sure about your life. You're not so sure on what is right and wrong. You're confused. You're at a loss. You're frustrated. You have doubts. But the question is, if you're willing to believe, just like Martha, then you will experience this life that is eternal. That even if we die, we have that hope. We have that expectant. That expectancy of being alive again in Christ. And if you want to do that, so you mong isugu lang talaga sa binsa, Lord, Lord, I believe you. I trust you. To trust you, Lord. If that is you, I want us to pray this prayer with me. Pray this prayer with me. Just, just lift up your hands, everyone. Those who want to affirm your belief in Jesus. Yes, Lord, we believe. Go ahead, all over the place. Just, if you just want to affirm that, maybe, maybe some of you did believe, but then you know, you went through some kind of disorientation and pain and suffering, and, and right now you just wanna, you just wanna declare, that, Lord, I want to believe you. I believe you. If you, if you want to do that right now, just lift up your hands. Lord, you see these hands right now. Maybe some of these hands are struggling. Some of these hands are confused. Some of us, these hands, Lord God, their dreams have died. Lord God, maybe some of us, our faith in you has died. But even right now, Lord God, as you spoke, Lord God, the word to Lazarus to come forth, Lord. Lord, as we speak this word, Lord God, of life, Lord, I pray, let those dreams come alive. Let our spirits come alive. Let our passion come alive. Let our faith come alive in Jesus name Lord we trust you we believe you right now can you just say these words with me Lord Jesus today Lord I come to you and I trust you I trust you for my life I trust you for my future and I believe in you Lord I believe you are the son of God I believe that you have come to save me I believe that you have the words of eternal life. Jesus, I believe. I believe. Father, I pray everyone just put their trust on you right now. Lord, fill their hearts. Holy Spirit, Lord, right now, do a work, Lord God, in their lives right now. Lord, let there be a fresh orientation, a new orientation, Lord God, of who you are. Lord, that as we start to trust in you, Lord God, there will be a, a greater measure of faith and love and belief, Lord God, that indeed, Lord, we can spend eternity with you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a clap. You're watching Destiny Church. If you would like to check more resources or donate to this ministry, you can download the Destiny Church PH official app or log on to www.destinychurch.org.ph.